Hello again, this is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the online version of 152.157 Website Development XHTML CSS for the Fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. Right now I'd like to go over Chapter 8 of our textbook with you. It's a very short chapter and it's on tables. So. You can see the objectives here. I'm not going to read them to you, but again, the key thing to realize about tables is they used to be used for just about everything in website development. In fact, most people would set up every page as a table, and they may have had several tables inside of their tables. That's not done nearly as often anymore today. Now CSS is the layout tool of choice, as they say in the book. So in this chapter, you become familiar with coding tables for organizing tabular information on a web page. All right, and that is the purpose of a table. Just to show you this very quickly here, if I come through here, and I'm not going to even worry about you know making a whole bunch of real big things or whatever, uh, but if I come through here, doc type, HTML, HTML. Head, title, table example, let's create a quick table, all right? Tables start with a table tag and they end with a table tag, with a slash table tag. All right, in between there, there's a lot of stuff that you can have. I'm going to just show you a typical type of table. So let's see. Um, let's say that I was doing a table for a pro baseball player. All right, so I'm going to have a table header here. Oops, sorry. A table row here, and that table row will have a table header in it. And it'll say wins. losses and ERA which is an acronym for earn run average all right so that'll be our first row now if I just stop right there and I'll end my body tag oops and I'll end my table tag oops Sorry, I'll end my HTML file. All right, so I'm going to save this. I'll just throw it in the desktop and I'll stick it in under table example. Table example.html. All right, there it is. Now, if I go and run the program under Chrome, that's what it looks like. You go, well, that's not a table. Yeah, one thing that you usually do put on a table, which I have neglected to here, is a border. So border equals 1. So we're putting a 1 pixel border on there. So if I run it again, there it is. Again, it doesn't look like much, but let's put a few things in there. All right, in fact, let's, let's add one more thing to it. Let's add one more heading. Um, so I'm going to put in here... about name okay all right then we're going to put in another row here in fact I'll put in a few rows just so you can see what it is TD uh, Zach Granky say that he has 15 wins four losses and he has an ERA of 1.9787 all right now hopefully once I run this it'll start looking a little bit more like a table okay all right so I'm just gonna copy his record and I'll make some changes to it but let's just copy that record 
Okay, so I've got five players in here now, so let's change some of them. Kershaw, we'll say he won 13 games. He lost four also, and he has a 1.34 ERA. All right. Uh, Jimmy Nelson, Brewers. He'll have 12 wins and 11 losses, and his ERA, the higher the, the ERA, the worse, the worse job typically you're doing. So there's three. I'll put in a couple more. Um, Steven Strasburg. He has ten wins. I'm making these all up. The, the names are pretty close, but I'm making the rest of it up. 2.99. All right, and finally, one more person. Um, Shelby Miller. We'll have him have 18 wins, 11 losses, and a 3.16 ERA. You know, I just, the, the names I think are correct, but I made up all the other stuff. All right? That's tabular data. That's actually how you go in and you create all right right there that's how you create a table now I forgot how to do this in here because I'm at my home machine but there's there's supposed to be a way that I can come in here and under somewhere in here under options I'd like to make the screen size bigger the size of the font Zoom in. Control mouse wheel up. Control mouse wheel out. Control. Here we go. Okay. So this is how you create a table. Again, I don't care about the HTML stuff here really anymore. Tables go are within table tags. I can remove the border. All right. I can. There's not a problem at all with removing the border. But you know that when I run it after I remove the border, it doesn't look as much really like a table anymore. All right. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. It's totally fine to do. All right, sometimes you want to put that border in there, and sometimes you don't. All right? Tables, everything that you put in tables goes within table rows. So there's begins with a TR, ends with a TR. And these lines that are here, stand, they have TH, which stands for table header. Well, as you already saw when you took a look at this, All right, the headers are automatically bolded. Okay. And after your table headers comes your table data. Now, if for some reason, let's say that I didn't know how many with Clayton Kershaw, I didn't know his ERA. You don't want to leave that blank like this. Okay, because sometimes tables when you leave them blank, don't resonate very well on screen. So if nothing else, you put an ampersand NBSP for non-breaking space. So if I put that in there, it's going to look a little funkier because there's nothing in that one but a blank space. All right. And I can come through here, and there's a few other things that I can put in here if I'm so inclined. Put that back again. So let's whatever it was there, 1.34. Um, for the table, I can put a caption, and I can say uh, Major League Pitching Leaders, and in the caption. All right. Again, it's usually best to just run this, because then you can see exactly what's going on. You can place that caption on the top, on the bottom, or I think on either one of the sides, too. All right. So what I just showed you is kind of an overview, the same kind of table that they showed in the book on page 356. All right. And on 357, they talk about the table elements. 
and they talk about alignment and they notice they'd say that it's that's obsolete in HTML5 meaning you shouldn't use it background color same thing borders there is no visible border with zero or you leave it blank but you can put in 1 to 100 if you put in 100 it's going to look like a big border cell padding cell spacing have both become obsolete in HTML5 same with the summary all right one thing we can put in here is again if somebody is looking at this particular table and they're sight impaired this sure isn't going to help them much so we can come in here with a title and put the same thing as we put in with our caption here major league pitching leaders so that way if a person has if they're hearing or I'm sorry if they're sight impaired that uh, you know they can have that read to them or whatever all right there's also a width attribute that again has been made obsolete in HTML5 so I showed you the caption and there's a few other things that you can do if you want to all right so they talk about some of the tape so those are table attributes that I just mentioned and there's some table data attributes that are on page 358 many of them are the same as the table attributes many of them have also been made obsolete in HTML5 all right so let's see um, let's say that I change this so instead of name I put in here first name and then I add last name again I'm not sure why I'd want to do that but and you'll see that as soon as I do that all right now it looks really kind of funky because what I have are one, two, three, four, five columns, but only four rows of information. I should say five columns and four columns of information. All right, so I'd have to go in there and add some more stuff. So, you know, again, I would just break it up the way you think I would. I grab this. Again, much of the stuff that you do in here, like, like some of the other stuff we've done in other classes, is fairly intuitive in nature. You can figure it out yourselves without a whole heck of a lot of work. All right, so that didn't really take a lot. Now, it would have taken a lot more if I would have had a lot more names in there. All right, but you can see what's going on. All right. If you want something to span more than than one uh, more than one row, you can do it. If you want something to span more than one column, you can do it. All right. So don't ask me again why I'd want to do this, but I just want to show you this. So I'm going to say for Jimmy Nelson, I'm going to say row span equals two. I think I put that in there correct. We're going to find out right now. And I didn't. So we'll fix that in just a second. Because you do it by the data. Okay? So let's say that for whatever reason, Jimmy didn't have a last name. How's that? Leave that off for a second, and I'm going to grab that row span equal 2 that we put right there. And I'm going to put it in here. Again, this may look funky, and this isn't the greatest of examples that I just came up with to do it, but I wanted to show it to you regardless. All right, so see how that took up, that took up two rows now? That makes it look really funky. And what I really wanted that to do was not to take up two rows, but to take up two columns. 
So I'll change it from row span to call span. Okay, and you see that it takes up all that. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if for some reason you did have a picture who had just one name, that might be a way of getting around that or might be something that you want to do. All right. Like I said, I just am doing this example off the top of my head, and I probably could have and should have come up with something a little bit better. But you've seen them at least, okay? All right. So I'm going to get it back to the way that I think it should be, which is... So again, the, everything that you see between a, a set of TR tags represents a table row. If it's TH, those are table headers. If it's TD, that's table data. All right, so here we've got one row of headers and then one, two, three, four, five rows of data. And when we run it, that's exactly what you see. All right. Now, they talk about configuring an accessible table in here on, uh, on page 362, and the author says that tables can be useful to organize information on a web page, but what if you couldn't see the table and you were relying on assistive technology like a screen reader to help you? Okay, then we could come in here and we could do this. So, for instance, every single thing that we've got in here, all right, so basically, going to look a little funky for a minute and I, I believe when we run it it's going to look exactly the same as it does right now so we can come in here and we can say th and then we can give it an ID ID equals first name th ID equals last name ID equals wins ID equals losses, and ID equals ERA. All right, so we've put an ID in for every one of them. Then what we do is when we go down, down here, we then put, for each one of these, we put headers equal, and again, this would be first name. All right, so I would have to take this one, Put it into each one of these. All right. I'm going to change this then from first to last name. This isn't going to help your... Uh, a person who doesn't have any kind of an impairment, it won't help them at all. All right, so I'll come into here and I'll say this is wins. and this one then becomes losses. Again, you are doing this to try to take your table and make it as accessible to everyone as you possibly can. All right, two, three, four, five. Looks like it's just about all done. And we'd have to say headers equal ERA here. Again, as far as I know, oh, I guess I didn't do that last one. As far as I know, then, to the naked eye, this isn't going to look any different when we run it. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. It looks the same as it did before. All right. So for more complex tables, the W3C recommends specifically associating the table data cell values with their corresponding headers. All right. 
as he was, was just shown. All right, well, what about styling a table and styling it using CSS? We literally have about six pages left in the chapter. All right, so I'm going to come back in here, and I don't like putting my style information in here, but since this is the whole table, I am going to throw it in here. So I'm going to put in style tags. I can always pull them out later and put them into an external CSS file. All right. So I can come through here, and some of the stuff I can do if I want to is I can say table. I'm going to use some of the examples that are shown in the book. So All right, margin auto. You know that what, what that does. It's going to center it. Border. Again, I'm just grabbing some of the stuff out of the book. Five pixel, solid, bound zero 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 six six, with six hundred pixels. That's going to maybe look a little funny because there's not a whole lot of information in there. But there it is. All right. And in much the same way, so that was actually articulating or writing some CSS for the actual, the entire table itself. But I can also come in and write CSS for the table data in the table header. So the table, let's say that I want the table header, for whatever reason, I want that to be font size 1.25M. The 25 should be big enough. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Let's see if we made it bigger. And, it, and we did. All right. You'll notice that, again, that by default, again, unless told otherwise, all of your table headings are centered, and basically all of your table data is left justified. You can change that with text aligns if you want. So let's make a couple changes to our table data. And they're saying here uh, that we want borders and padding. Oh, let's, let's put in some padding. Oops. So padding. Again, I'm taking this out of the book. And they say font family. Ariel Sans Serif. All right, they also put a border around both of these, but there's already a border around the table. I think that's good enough. So let's go back and look at it again. Okay, so you can see by making some changes that maybe aren't that big of changes, maybe are depending on your point of view. Okay, I can also come in and do the same kind of thing with the caption in here. Oops, oh, put your fingers on the right keys. caption we can use the same font family if we want again as I'm making these changes I refresh so you can see the difference that didn't show anything well, that didn't look good so let's go back and double check that one because they didn't have an opening curly And looking pretty decent. All right, again, this actually probably looks good the way it is, but if I wanted to, I could come in here for my table data. Now I'm going to show you this, but you, you have to decide yourselves whether or not you'd want to do this. I can say text align center. All right, but again, 
it, does that make it look better or worse? I guess you be the judge. In that case, it looks pretty uniform, so it doesn't look too bad. All right, so that's pretty much the stuff shown on 365 and uh, 366. Oh, there is one more thing. I can come in here and, and I can do this. Um, let's see. They, there are different ways of doing this, but this is the way they're going to show in here. They're asking you to add a new class. So you start it with a dot, and you call it Alt Row, and you give it a different color. Whoops, background color. And then every other row, when we come up to the actual table, so not that row, but every other row, we'll say class equals alt row. Again, there are other ways of doing this, and we'll talk about some of those at a later time. Again, it's much easier to run the program and show you the difference. So you can see how we've taken every other row and made it a different color. All right. Now, they mention under the FAQs on the middle of page 366, the author says, they ask the question, is there a way to create a page table-like page layout with CSS? Not yet, but there will be more options in the future. And they talk about some of the stuff that we're going to be getting to. All right at a later time. So I'm not going to really talk about it any more than that right now. Some of the CSS3 structural pseudo classes. All right. So they, they talk about a couple things in here and there's a table, no pun intended, because it, there's an actual table in the book here, table 85 on page 367. CSS structural pseudo, pseudo class selectors allow you to select and apply classes to elements based on their position in the document. All right, not just every other row. So, for instance, if I did this, this is the example that they show. This is the example that they show in the book on page 367 on the middle of the page. So, if we say li first, well, that's an unordered list. So if we came in here and we said this, I don't know why we do this. Uh, well, let's add an unordered list. That's fine. We'll add an unordered list under this. Let's put in a few line breaks. All right, then we'll put in an unordered list. Item, item one. put in six items here and then we'll end this all right so we've got item one item two three whoops three four five and six you've seen this kind of thing before so if we go and run this there's the table and there's our item list. All right. Now if we go back into where we just were and we go up here into our CSS and we add this li colon first of type color make it something pronounced like they have in the book ff0000 and I put it this time in lowercase it doesn't matter if you're writing with hex numbers whether you put them in upper or lowercase again we've saved let's run it and take a look at it because I think it'll make more sense then you'll notice that the first item is now in red all right so they have a hands-on practice that allows you to, to work on the table and make some changes to it it's when you get done, it's not going to look that different than the table that we have right here. So I'm not going to do any more in that. Okay. The last thing that's discussed in the chapter on pages 368 and 369 is the author says there are a lot of configuration options for quoting tables. Table rows can be put together into three types of groups. 
table head with T head, table body with T body, and table footer with T foot. The only thing to really realize about this and to keep in mind is if you're going to use a T head, a T body, and a T foot, you would think that naturally you do the T head, then the T body, then the T foot. But it doesn't work if you do that. You must do the, the um, T head first, all right? Then you must do the T body, then the T foot. Well, that's what I thought, okay? It says these groups are useful when you need to configure the areas in the table in different ways. The T body is required. If you configure the T head or T foot area, although you can admit, omit either the T head or the table footer if you like. When you use table row groups like T head and T foot, they must be coded before the T body section. All right, so that's what it was. To pass the uh, HTML validation. All right, so in the example that they show on page 369, they don't do that. All right, so they come up here and they've got their table all right, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come back in here. Let's do this. Uh, we'll come in here, and this UL, I'm going to remove it. Okay. And I'm going to add a second table, so I'll get rid of all this stuff, too. And let's do this first. Let's, let's take all of our CSS out of here. Start up a new file, put it in there. Oops, that's definitely not what I wanted to do. That was pretty bad. Okay, let's close that. Save it? No. Try that again. Okay. Oh, I lost everything. All right. I think what I'll do is just wrap the example that they have in the book. How's that? All right. So now if I go, you'll see what happens with no. All right. Boy, oh boy. There we go. So we lost all that stuff. I've got to try to bring it back now. So. Let's see if we, do we have the table data in here someplace. Ba -bum, ba -bum. I think I've got it out there. Data silence. I'm looking for the student data. All right. And I'm going to have to go grab that off the internet. So. So I come down here to book source. There's the student data files. Let's save that. Now up here, it's going to take a second to load. Once it does, I'm just going to open up this last example that's shown in the book on pages 368 and 369, just for completeness sake. Okay. So the example that's shown in the book there they mentioned there's a lot of configuration options and I think this is the one that they have you make right here. And the code for that there's the right there that's the CSS and then it looks like this in here and the key thing is they have combined into the body everything that's not in the header, all right? And then they put some totals down at the bottom and put that into a footer. Let's see. Should just about 
be loaded almost. So again, this is the information for this is the information for oh, come on. Oh, this is taking a long time to undo. So let's look at the last table that they put in here. All right, that's the bird sighting, so that's not the one. All right, chapter eight. So that's what they have you create. So this is your caption. This is the stuff in your T head area. This is the stuff in your T-body area, and this is the stuff in your T-foot area. Again, that can make it easier for people who are using, using assisted devices in order to be able to come in there and actually use this stuff. All right, so I'm just going to stop right here, and when I come back, we'll go over quickly the case study or the quest the changes you have to make for the prime properties.